in the previous video, we went ahead and set up our torso. Let's go ahead and get the leg put together. So we're going to go ahead and use a cylinder, an herb cylinder this time. So under the surfaces tab, go ahead and select cylinder. I'm going to drop it in the window here. We're going to press R and we're going to scale this out and probably scale it up a bit on the Y and bring it down some. And we'll go to the front view to get a better setup of this. So I went over to the front view and move this over closer to this leg and scale it this way. That way I can get a little bit accurate setup for how this should look. That looks pretty close. Maybe scale it up just a tad bit more. That looks pretty decent right there. Now we need some more isoparms. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll drop down this make nerve cylinder and we'll go to the spans here and we're going to increase this up to say maybe a seven should be pretty good. So once we have it at seven, we'll go ahead and do a bit of shaping here. So let's right click on it, go to control vertex. And let's treat this just like we did the torso. We're just going to do some basic scaling here. So I'll grab some of them, scale them in and try to match them up with this line real quickly. Shouldn't take very long to do. I can see that I can probably bring everything from there down in and scale the whole thing. And then I'll grab these and I can see that these are a little bit off to the side there. So we'll go ahead and drag these in some. That's good. Maybe drag this in. And probably could have just grabbed all of them. <laughs> would have saved time. But anyways, continue to do your shaping here. So we'll just go ahead to go to the scale tool. Now again, I'm not moving them up or down on the Y because that'll make this complex to look at whenever we go over to the side view. I'm just scaling them on this X axis. I'm not moving them up or down, not yet. We'll do that here in a minute to get closer shaping, but we wanna keep it fairly basic because if we start moving them up and down, it's gonna make this isoparm. For instance, if I were to grab one, you can see you can see the ring going around it and that'll make it complex to shape whenever we go to the side view. So we'll do that near the end of our shaping. So I'll go ahead and grab this here. This looks pretty good, nice and well shaped. You can, however, again, avoid that center line and grab the two on one side or the two on the other side to get a more accurate shape going. And this is just a form of working with these nerves, just one way of doing it. There are several different ways of creating a character base for sculpting geometry on top of, or rather building geometry on top of. I shouldn't say sculpting, that's a bad way to put it. This will all make a lot of sense whenever we get a little bit further along, we begin to build our geometry. So now we have the front shape. Let's go to the side and go ahead and line these up a bit. So very quickly, I'll just go ahead, zoom out and look at the whole thing. All these ones probably could move forward some, and these look like they're in the right spot, but they're all too far out. So I'll grab all these and I will scale these in. Go, that's scaled in, and let's go ahead and just continue to shape. I'll just continue to line these up. Continue to scale them. There we go, looks good. This all looks pretty good right here. I'm just analyzing it as I go along. And I can bring this in and probably draw it back some. I'll grab these and just scale these in. And this looks pretty good. Now I'll go ahead and begin to work with just the two on one side or the other. To try to get a better shape going. This looks good. These ones can come out. And these can come out. Along with these. And probably bring that out some. So this looks pretty good. The back needs to come out. Probably get some good shaping going here. So this looks pretty good here. So I will go ahead and just do a little bit of shaping. Now that I have an initial shape set up to where it's fairly close on both the front and the side, now I'll go ahead and move these up and down to try to get even more accurate. Probably drag this down just a bit to get a little bit closer. There'll be this little bump here. We'll just have to remember that whenever we get into shaping it. Try to get it as close as possible within these lines. That's really what you're going for. Just try to get it as close as you can within the outline. This looks good. I can probably grab these and just drag these up some. That looks good there. And don't want to get too fancy with this. Just want to kind of keep it simple. Looks good there. This is good. So I'll go to the back end. I will take a look here at these. This area here. I can probably drag those back just a tad bit. And maybe drag these in just a bit. It's a little closer. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting close. So this looks, all looks pretty good. 
Um, no, I don't want to mess with that. So <laughs> let's go ahead and go into our perspective view and see how this turned out. So we'll right click, go to object mode, take a look at this leg. And the leg looks uh, fairly decently shaped. I'll go ahead and hide the character image planes, kind of rotate around this to see if we got a good shape going. That's a pretty good shaped leg, so we'll go ahead and leave that there. And now what we want to do is duplicate this, or rather mirror it, over to the opposite side. So let's go ahead and do that. What we want to do to mirror a NURB surface is where we're going to go to the panel layout. And with our NURB cylinder one selected, what we want to do is put it into a group. Because as you can see here, the pivot is set up at the center of the object. So it's going to be right here at the center of the NURB surface. There's our pivot. Well, if we tried to mirror this, it would actually mirror directly next to it which wouldn't be very helpful to us. We're going to use a scale, negative scale mirror. And to do that, we need to get that pivot in the center. So let's go ahead and select this nerve cylinder. What we're going to do is group it. So we're going to hit Control plus G. That's going to put it into a group. Now we need to duplicate it to create the other leg. So I'll hit Control plus D. That's going to create a second group. And now we want to mirror this group. Well, how do we do that? Well, we're going to come over here to the scale, X. And I can see it's the X plane that I want the mirror to occur on. And if you just come over here to scale X and you type in negative one, watch what happens when you press enter. Boom. It mirrors over to the opposite side of the world environment. So that's how you would do a mirror on something like this. Now in order to make that stay concrete so it is permanent in that location, what you want to do is go ahead and come up here to modify with this group selected modify and want to select freeze transformations and sometimes you will get this error which causes the object to go entirely black and if that happens all you have to do is come over here to the NURB cylinder and we're going to go into polygons drop this down go to surfaces mode and you want to go to the edit NURBs and you want to do reverse surface direction and you'll notice that flipped it back around. Not that it really matters because this is not the geometry that we're going to be keeping, but in order to make it easier to see and visually discern what we're working with, that's what you want to do. So if that error ever occurs, you now know how to fix it. It's a very annoying error. I hope they do repair that error in Maya someday, but as of right now, it is an error and issue that does occur. So I'm actually happy that happens. So, so if any of you do come across it, you'll know how to fix it now. You just have to reverse the surface direction for NURBS. So now that this is reversed, we've already freezed the transformation that freezed this negative X scale. We've got to pull this out of this group. We want to go ahead and just middle mouse it and just drag it out. And we'll go to our group one. We don't need this in a group anymore, so we'll just grab it and we'll just drag it out. And now that they're both out of those groups, we'll just go ahead and grab those two groups and we'll just delete them. We don't need them anymore. So now we have our two legs. So in the next video, what we're going to do is take a look at how we can build the arm using the top character image. But again, before you jump ahead, this needs lined up properly because I know this top reference image is not lined up correctly right now. At least it isn't for me. Hopefully you lined yours up better. I know this is not lined up correctly. So we'll adjust that in the next video and create the arm. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.